Do you remember a time when the Spider-Man franchise was getting video games every couple of years? Sure, most of these games released in very mediocre quality, but when we were kids, that did not matter. I think Spider-Man on PS4 has proven to us that with time and effort, this franchise can make for an amazing game. So I thought, why not? With Spider-Man 2 right around the corner, I thought it would be a good idea to check out every Spider-Man game released for the Nintendo DS and PSP. And you know, if you really want to feel like Spider-Man, you can't do that on the couch. How often do you see Spider-Man lazing around on the couch? If you really want to feel like Spider-Man, it's best to go do that outside in the real world. So if you're playing this game out in public, Well, people may not think you're Spider-Man, but you might feel like him. Today, I'm going to play and review every Spider-Man game released for the DS and PSP. So let's see if any of these games can make me feel like Spider-Man. The first games I'll be taking a look at is Spider-Man 2 for the DS and PSP, which was actually a launch title for the DS. So since it's an early DS game, I'm not expecting that much. Something else that's strange is that you can also watch Spider-Man 2 the movie on the PSP. So when this game was still being sold, there would be two Spider-Man 2s on store shelves. And you know that probably confused a lot of parents back in the day. Throughout this video, I will always start with the DS version, and then move on to any other versions from there on out. I'm just saying this now so I don't have to repeat myself. So let's start the game. The start screen music is actually pretty decent. Let's hope the game is the same. As you can see, this game is a 2D side-scroller. Sometimes the game tries to be 2.5D, but it's not very often. In this game, we obviously play as Spider-Man. He can do all the stuff you expect, like wall crawling and web swinging. But when it comes to fighting an enemy, yeah, he's not very good at it. You can punch and kick your enemies, but it just feels pretty bad. And most of the time, you'll just be locked into one place. Like, I'll keep trying to fight back, but the enemy has me stuck. On the bottom screen, you got a bunch of special moves you can do. You just tap on whatever one you want to do and press the shoulder button. I unlock three of these, and I can literally not find any of the other ones, but they're alright. None of them are really that useful. The one where you can throw people off is kind of fun, just swinging them off the buildings. But since the combat is so bad, I guess I'll try and avoid doing it in general. Let's just carry on in this stage. Now I'm in a burning building and have to rescue five people and then I can leave. You rescue the civilians simply just by going over to them. The problem is this building is like a maze. There are multiple paths you can go down and at times it almost seems endless. At the same time, you have to avoid fire and a ton of other hazards. Like there's even enemies in here as well. I have no clue why they'd just be chilling inside a burning building, but sure. But yeah, I ended up dying because of the annoying number of hazards and guess what? I have to restart the whole level again. That's brutal. I'm on the first level in the game and I already died. After spending 20 minutes, I did finally beat the first level. The game gave me a D ranking. Yeah, I have no clue how I would have gotten much better. Before the next level starts, we have to sit through some dialogue. Oh god, look at Tobey Maguire. What do they do to him? He barely looks recognizable. Anyways, this next level is just some random part in the city. And my objective is to take down 23 enemies and that's it. Again, these levels are so poorly designed. I am constantly getting lost and having to backtrack 24-7. I will say though, while the combat sucks, the movement in this game actually feels pretty okay. Web swinging is super fast, sometimes too fast for the system to even keep up. You can also pull yourself towards any walls and it feels pretty decent to control. I do think that wall climbing got pretty annoying though because I would just accidentally keep getting stuck on random walls. I did play the next few stages in this game and things didn't get much better. Honestly, something that would have helped this game big time is a map. You know, only if there was an area they could dedicate to having a whole map to. It seems so obvious to put a map on one of the DS screens. At this point, I just feel like they didn't include one on purpose. Like, the levels in this game are so confusing and I'm spending so much time backtracking. A map would have prevented that. The objectives in most levels are always the same, just find civilians or defeat a certain amount of bad guys. Later in the game, they make them timed, which is an absolute nightmare to complete. Most of the levels are just in the city and will be recycled over and over again. A lot of levels are the exact same design, just now you're doing a different objective in them. I got up to the boss fight with Mysterio. Yes, I know this game is not accurate to the films in the slightest, but the boss fight is so lame. He does this annoying move where he'll be floating and then there'll be fire below him. So every time you hit him, it's basically impossible to avoid touching the fire. Also, just now mentioning, any enemies that are airborne are dreadful to attack. 
There's also this very strange touchscreen portion of the boss fight, but after I kept failing the level where you must defeat 23 robots in unlimited time, I gave up. This game is not fun in the slightest, and honestly, if this game had better levels or things to do, it would be a lot better. But all I'm hoping for is the PSP version can actually be something decent. Once I start the game, I'm asked if I want to do some training, so I guess I'll try that out. This game is 3D with a super up close camera perspective, but it controls so poorly. Web swinging in particular is really bad. All you do is press the jump button once and he goes forward automatically. You control if he goes up, down, left, and right. It just does not feel right though. It's even worse than actual missions. Anything that requires timing or accuracy when it comes to web swinging is almost impossible. Everything else in this game mostly controls fine. Like the combat isn't anything special, it's basically just keep tapping the attack button until an enemy is defeated. Mentioning things that aren't special, the levels are exactly the same. Sometimes you're outside or have to chase a villain or helicopter, but most levels take place inside buildings. There's never really anything challenging. You just keep walking and fighting enemies in your way. At times, you'll be tasked with finding a switch to open a door or webbing a car before it falls. But other than that, there isn't that much going on. I think one of the best parts of the game has to be after you beat a level, because Toby McGuire sounds so unenthusiastic. Gotta hustle if I wanna meet Harry on time. Now, where'd those guys run off to? They couldn't have gotten far on foot. No sign of hostages on this floor. Only one way to go now. I mean, most of the dialogue in this game just sounds so off. Everyone seems so bored, and it doesn't even seem like anyone wanted to be there. But it does create for some hilarious cutscenes. As you complete levels, you get points, which can be used to upgrade some pretty basic skills. Like health, melee, jumping, or just to get some new moves but it's still pretty shallow. Something I found very annoying is how bad the camera is. It does not turn with you, so a lot of the time there'll be tons of enemies completely off screen and I have no way to turn the camera to look at them. This gets pretty bad during boss fights. If you aren't able to dodge your attacks, then you're going to take a big chunk of damage. Boss fights in general just suck. All of them are pretty much exactly the same. You dodge attacks until it's your turn to attack. Or they can just be kind of confusing, like the final boss fight in the game. It's against Dr. Octopus and you have to shoot webs at him, but sometimes this would just have no effect at all. This game is just very basic. It's not bad, there just isn't anything all that special about it. I literally beat the whole story in two hours and had my skills fully leveled up. It's very easy to complete and there isn't anything left to do after completing it. But there are some cheats. They're not really anything special. Like, they have the usual big heads, big feet, or just make the character really tiny. But hey, I won't complain. Cheats are fun. But I don't have anything else to say about this game. Well, other than Tobey Maguire looks absolutely terrifying in this game, and all the cutscenes look weird. Anyways, time to move on to the Ultimate Spider-Man for Nintendo DS. Starting things off, I like the art direction for this game, making everything look like a comic, even having the cutscenes shown to you like a comic book. The illustrations were even done by actual comic book artists. It really gives this game a bit of style, even if it doesn't feel that way in the actual game. But let's talk about the first level. I'm playing as Peter Parker and fighting Venom in this football field. <laughs> Okay, well, that didn't go as expected. Let's load the game back up and try again. I'm playing as Peter Parker and fighting Venom in this football field. Every time I land the blow on Venom, a comic book panel appears on the top screen. After I do a couple of combos on Venom, the level ends. I know what you're thinking. That was it? I was thinking the same thing as well. The level was not even replayable in the slightest. It's just punch Venom a couple of times and that's it. At least after that, I get to watch some more cutscenes. I do like how they're utilizing both screens during the cutscenes. It creates a kind of cool effect and something that I didn't see utilized on the DS very often. In the second level, I'm actually in the Spider-Man suit. He controls fine in this game. Obviously, he does all the basic stuff like web swinging and wall crawling, which both feel Okay, but you won't really be using your web slinging at all in this game, because if you are web slinging, you'll most likely miss a citizen that needs saving. And if you do, you have to restart the whole entire level. For most of this level, I'm just walking around a very bland neighborhood and saving civilians. You only have a limited amount of time to save the civilians. Saving them most of the time is as simple as walking up to them and grabbing them and bringing them back to a certain location. But sometimes it will require you to rapidly touch touchscreen. I wish I could say this was the only level where you do this, but no, most of the levels are literally just walk forward, save a couple people, and repeat. This game's main focus is about Spider-Man saving people, which is such a weird choice to dedicate a game to. Like, you do fight criminals, but it's never as often as you will be saving civilians. The combat feels fine in this game. Again, it's 
it's nothing amazing or even spectacular. You have a basic three hit combo and every time you hit an enemy, a comic book panel will appear on the bottom screen. It doesn't do anything though, it's just kind of there. Again, the touch screen probably could have been utilized for a map or something. There are boss fights in this game, but they're all the typical dodge enemies until you can attack sort of deal. Also, why is Rhino so big? Look at him, he's a giant. But the levels are really boring and the settings are bland as hell. Just keep moving right, save people, and fight enemies. Sometimes they'll ask you to disable a bomb before it blows up. I'm only mentioning this because it's a touchscreen minigame, but it doesn't feel any different from just saving a civilian. Also, something I need to mention, but this game was running pretty poorly. I have no clue why, but the audio was very laggy, and this game would just constantly slow down. I'm not sure if it's because of the emulation or just that's how the game is in general. Somehow I have not mentioned this, and it's probably because it doesn't really do much, but the main gimmick in this game is that you can sometimes choose different paths to take. I don't know how much effect it has, but it's definitely a thing that's in this game. You also get to play as Venom sometimes, but he really sucks. His health is constantly draining and the only way you can refill it is by attacking civilians. But there will be some levels where I just can't find any civilians at all. And there are these enemies with guns that will be constantly shooting at me. For some reason they can't refill your health so I would just constantly die as him. Venom doesn't feel like a powerful monster in this game, he's completely pointless. He dies so easily. I stopped playing the game during the Venom level because it just did not seem worth it to continue at all. It's such a slog to get through and I only played like the first half of it. I can understand if this annoys some people but I'm sorry this game is so slow in mind and it doesn't even control the best either. Like why did they focus so much on Spider-Man saving people when they could have focused on making the game fun? For starters, make the levels fun. These are just some generic locations that any character could be in. And the level design is just so boring. Every level consists of doing the same thing. Spider-Man is supposed to be fast paced and always moving, but here I am taking my time to save one person. I don't really have anything good to say about this game. It's just so mediocre and boring. But there is one more thing I should mention before I move on. This game has multi cartridge multiplayer. It's a battle mode. I tried it out for a couple minutes, got really bored, and I have absolutely nothing to say about it. Well, it's time to talk about the next game, but lucky me because it's a prequel to the game I was just talking about. Spider-Man Battle for the New York on Nintendo DS. Well, basically, everything looks the same as the last game. Still got the same comic book cutscenes and graphics are identical. To switch things up, in the first level, you play as Green Goblin instead of Spider-Man. At least I think that's Green Goblin. He looks more like some weird dragon that doesn't have wings. But my goal as Green Goblin is to destroy anything I see. I can't beat up any civilians, but I can beat up cops. It looks really weird though, and all the animations feel very stiff. The combat feels exactly like the last game, and Green Goblin does have some new moves that make him a bit different from Spider-Man, like being able to shoot fire from his mouth or grabbing people and throwing them. It doesn't help with the dragon comparisons though. He feels fine, I'm glad I'm not being stopped every couple of seconds to save some random person, but like, all I'm doing is moving right until there's an enemy on my screen, stopping them, then continuing to move right. Eventually you do go to Peter Parker's school and light it on fire, but with Green Goblin, there is isn't much to him that really shakes up this game's already boring and uninspired formula. But after you're done with the first level, you get to play as Spider-Man. He controls exactly the same as how he did in the last game, this time his levels are just far worse. The whole second level is literally just saving people. There are no enemies, you go through his high school that feels like an endless maze and have to save like 20 people. This wouldn't be awful but there's fire everywhere that's almost impossible to dodge accurately. And saving people has a time limit. If you don't get to that person on time, you have to restart the whole entire level, even resaving all 20 something people that you had to do before. This wasn't fun at all. The building is tight and cramped and everything looks the same so it's easy to get lost. I replayed this mission so many times and it is an awful introduction to this game. Most fun from Spider-Man games comes from swinging around the city and fighting bad guys, not saving people. After this level, you fight Green Goblin. It's a very simple boss fight, like normal, just dodge attacks until it's your turn to attack. And once that's done, it's just another boring Green Goblin level. The main difference being this time you're in a lab. There's nothing special to say about it, and I can say that for almost every single level in this game. I got halfway through this game and just stopped playing. There was nothing exciting to keep me wanting to play more, and overall, it's just not a good game. I'm not sure what I can say about this one that I didn't already say about the last one. Luckily, the next game released on the DS and PSP it's Spider-Man 3, and you know, that film isn't looked at in the best light, but maybe this game can be good. Let's have a look. The DS game has a whole new control scheme from previous Spider-Man titles on the DS. You control Spider-Man using the D-pad or the four face buttons. If you want to do combat, web shooting, or pretty much anything else, you have to use the touch screen. This works fine, but if you have to have a tutorial that's teaching you 10 plus different things you can do with it, 
I think it's already showing the flaws of this control scheme. There is so much you have to remember. To punch enemies, you swipe and then lift up the stylus in whatever direction you want them to go in. If you want to shoot web at an enemy or just anywhere, you double tap in the direction you want it to go in. And I'm just explaining this in a very simple way. Trust me, there's a lot more things you can do with the touchscreen. Anything that had to do with sliding the stylus on the touchscreen just did not work well at all. At least for me, it felt very unresponsive. You can unlock more moves by purchasing them in the shop, but I could just never get them to work most of the time. A lot of them have you doing all kinds of different things on a touchscreen, like doing it in a circular motion. I can kind of see what they're trying to do with this, but I always end up forgetting how to do most of the unique moves and resort to spamming random swipe attacks on the touchscreen. Like, it controls a lot better than how it sounds. Being able to freely aim your web with a stylus makes it a lot easier, and it can be fun pulling off cool combos. But most of the time when I try to do a full combo, I would just get killed and spamming seemed to work just fine. It's time to talk about the levels, and unfortunately it's following the same trend as most of the other Spider-Man games on the DS. They are very bland. Go around fighting bad guys and saving people until the level ends. The environments are all boring and nothing changes in the levels. Some levels can be absolutely massive as well, and without having any map, I will get lost in them and spend most of the time backtracking and being extremely bored. Doesn't help if you die, you have to restart the whole entire level, and it's very easy to die because of how annoying the controls are. Most levels are in this 2.5D perspective, but sometimes it can lead to some levels just feeling like paths. It doesn't feel like I'm exploring this area as Spider-Man, but I'm just moving down a set path. Occasionally, there are some boss fights, but like most things in this game, they are pretty lame. Like the one of Green Goblin, I'm literally just hitting barrels at him when he's under them. The levels are all really boring, but for the first time in the Spider-Man game on the DS, you get a free roam. I hope you don't have your expectations high though, because it's not really anything that special. It looks just like how the levels look in the 2.5D perspective. There isn't really anything to do in it. You just find some collectibles, but it's really just there so this game feels like there's a lot more to it. Traversing it is pointless because you can just fast travel everywhere and when you swing through the city you'll just get stuck in every little building completely stopping all momentum. Nothing really stands out at all and in most of the levels you'll literally be in the city anyway. Like the levels and free roam are so lame. You simply walk left or right and walk down a set path. Like what's the fun in that? At that point can you really call it a free roam? Sometimes before you start another level you'll have to do something in the free roam. Most of the time it'll just be defeat enemies. But I got stuck in this one area. I could just never defeat all the enemies fast enough, and I replayed the mission over and over again. So I just gave up there and decided to not play anymore. It sucks that so far all of these games have just been so boring or bad. This one tried to be unique with its control scheme, but it still has the same boring level design. Before I talk about the PSP version, this game had multiplayer. It is a battle mode and it is also not fun. I have nothing to say about it other than it exists. I hope the PSP version can finally be a good Spider-Man game. This game has 3D animated cutscenes and they can either look kind of cool or really bad. All the characters look really weird and they move like they're in Sid the Science Kid. The voice acting is better than the previous Spider-Man game on PSP. Tobey Maguire actually sounds like he cares. Also, for some reason, Bruce Campbell is narrating this whole game. He made fun of me for not having the game on the hardest setting. So I ended up changing it to that. Although having it on the hardest setting, the game didn't really feel that difficult. I just don't know why Bruce Campbell is narrating this whole game. Let's talk about the actual gameplay. This game is in a close camera perspective and it is really different from the DS game. You're introduced to the combat straight away and it actually feels good, although very basic. The usual basic heavy and web attacks is what make up the combat. It's not special by any means, but it can be really fun and satisfying to take down a horde of enemies. The combat is pretty easy, so if they want to throw a challenge at you, you'll need to dodge it enemy's attack, but it's kind of hard to know when an enemy is going to attack most of the time. It doesn't help that I don't have full camera control, but it's fine. Even if you do dodge an attack, another enemy can just hit you anyways, so your combo will always be ruined, so it's kind of pointless. Later in the game, you unlock the black suit, and it's a lot of fun to use. It has all the same moves as a normal suit, but you can endlessly do combos without getting tired. Enemies and bosses even have different dialogue depending on what suit you're in. You can't use the suit the whole time though. After you fight with it for a certain amount of time, you'll have to switch back to your normal suit before it consumes you. Spider-Man's movement is probably the best it has been compared to all the other games I've played so far, although the PSP definitely does not have enough buttons for this game. To move the camera, you hold down the L button and left D-pad. Or to dodge enemies, you have to hold down the L button and press the attack buttons, which just doesn't feel right. 
Like having the attack buttons also be the dodging buttons just doesn't work, especially in a game like this where the combat is fast paced. My brain sees this button as an attack button, so I can never just get used to having to use it as a dodge button as well. But I'm shocked they managed to make this game control as well as it does. The missions are actually pretty good in this game. Sure, they may be pretty basic, run around and fight bad guys, but it's honestly quite addicting. You'll have some levels that'll bring you to whole new places, like the sewers, and you'll have to fight loads of lizards. And at the end, have a boss fight against a giant lizard. But most of the time, you'll just be doing levels in the city. None of the levels are ever too long, and despite them not really having much variety, they didn't really bore me that much. Occasionally, there are some boss fights, but most of the time, they are quick time events. As you beat more levels, you unlock points for your skill tree, and there are loads of things to upgrade. It's a lot of fun trying to fill the whole thing out. But one of the best parts about this game is definitely the free roam. It is New York City, and it's actually pretty big considering this was on a PSP. But what this free roam does best is show how fun it is to web sling a Spider-Man. You have the basic web swinging, which is done by holding down the button, then having to let go, and then holding down the button again. It's fun just building up momentum and swinging really high in the sky. And if you're in an area that doesn't have buildings nearby, you can't web sling, which is a very nice detail. If you hold down the jump button, you can launch yourself in the air using your web, or if you press both bumpers, you can quickly pull yourself forward. Web swinging overall is a lot of fun and works surprisingly well for the PSP's lack of buttons. In the free roam, there isn't a whole lot to do that isn't missions, but this is super cool nonetheless. Sure, it may look ugly and the textures are pretty bad, but it doesn't really bother me because exploring is so much fun. My main complaint would have to be the lack of things to do in it outside of missions. Also, sometimes to start missions, you have to do something in the free roam, but it can be hard to tell what you're exactly supposed to do. I got pretty far into this game's story, but I just stopped getting missions and had no clue how to progress. So I stopped things there. Yeah, but I don't have much else to say about this one. It's genuinely pretty good. Sure, it's a very basic game, but seeing this game on a portable was probably mind blowing at the time, and even then, the game is just some classic Spider-Man fun. But it's time to move on to the next game. This game is kind of weird. It's using the Sam Raimi characters, but I don't think it's connected at all. It's titled Spider-Man Friend or Foe. It released for the DS and PSP, and I hope this game can finally break the curse of having bad Spider-Man games on the DS. So is this game any good? Well, this game is a very, very bare bones beat em up. You play as Spider-Man and some of his villains and go through so many amazing stages, such as city, parking lot, and lab. And these are some of the most lifeless levels I've ever played in my life. There's literally nothing going on in these stages. They're insanely slow to walk through and are just so lifeless. The combat in this game is super bad as well. Just the same three hit combos over and over again until you can do a special move. It's basically impossible to die and you can't do anything unique at all. Even when playing as the villains, none of them do anything different. They're basically just all skins of each other with different animations. Most of the gameplay consists of keep walking forward, oh there's some enemies in my way, let me take them out, and then keep moving forward again. Occasionally you'll have a touchscreen minigame, but these are so pointless and already make a super slow game feel even slower. The levels are so long for some reason, and throughout the whole entire level, everything looks the same. No cool collectibles or anything to find, no challenging areas or puzzles that'll make you think, nothing. Just keep walking forward until it is done. For some reason, this game will constantly keep switching between the top and bottom screen. Like when you're on the top of a building, you're on the top screen. And when you're on the ground, you're on the bottom screen. But this made the game so annoying to look at and just play. You can collect coins in the levels. You can spend these coins to play as villains on the free play mode or to upgrade Spider-Man's moves. Yes, only Spider-Man. You can't upgrade any other character. I think what annoyed me the most about this game is that while I was playing this game and was decently far along, my whole entire PC crashed. Like, I got the blue screen and everything. So I lost all my gameplay footage, making me play this game for so much longer. And out of all the games to make my PC crash, how was it this one? This game is as bad as licensed kids games get. Just insanely mindless with no care put into making sure this is a fun game. It is not fun in the slightest, and honestly, I'm surprised I played it for as long as I did. This game has no charm or anything in it at all. Like, Spider-Man can't even web slinging in this game. There's nothing special about it. This could have been any other generic beat-em-up. I never want to think about this game ever again, so let's hope the PSP version improves. Yeah, this one is fine. It is also a beat-em-up. Besides, this one has more impressive visuals and at least a lot more to it. Like, it's the same gameplay loop, but the combat is actually kind of fun, and you can pull off multiple combos. But movement just feels off. Like, whenever anyone jumps, the camera floats up with you, and Spider-Man's web-slinging basically being one big swing, and that's it. 
I don't know, this game is fine. A lot better than the DS game, that's for sure, but it's still a beat-em-up at the end of the day. And that's what most licensed tie-in games were back in the 2000s. So there's absolutely nothing special about this one. I think it's time to move on to Spider-Man Whip of Shadows for the DS and PSP. Hey, I think this is actually the first good game on the DS. It's a 2D side-scroller, but honestly, the game feels heavily inspired off the Metroid series. You have a massive city to explore with lots of puzzles, collectibles, enemies, and boss fights in your way. You can find hidden collectibles and lots of other cool stuff that can help you upgrade your character. And as you progress through the story, you unlock new moves and abilities, and you can use these abilities to go back in the free room and collect things you may have missed. But one of my favorite parts in this game is the combat. It's super fun and honestly kind of addictive. You can do so many different combos and enemies and even unlock more as you progress through the game. You can use the environment or take away enemies items while in combat and it all flows so nicely. It not only looks really cool, but it's so fun. And even if I didn't have to engage in combat, I always would just to see what new combos I could pull off or to level up my character. At any time during the game, you can switch to the symbiote suit, which gives you so many new exclusive moves. But he also plays a little different as well. Instead of having the ability to web sling, he has a dash attack, which can be useful during combat and help you traverse certain areas. Just look at this combat and you try and convince me that this doesn't look satisfying. Also, every time you lose all your health, you play this weird touchscreen minigame where you have to drag orbs to Spider-Man. Your health that'll replenish depends on how many orbs you'll get to him. This game doesn't really have levels. Instead, you just do different tasks in the city you're in. It's never anything too amazing. Most of the time, it just go to a certain area, solve a puzzle, or fight a bad guy, and that's it. But because of the combat and puzzles, it makes this game a really fun time. The puzzles would honestly take a while for me to figure out what exactly to do, but I was always rewarded well for solving one, and it feels very satisfying to solve it as well. There are honestly lots to do, like trying to unlock all the moves for your character, or collect all the collectibles around the hub world. Also, during this game's story, you'll be asked to choose a side. I'm not sure how much effect it has on the gameplay itself, but it gives you some replayability. The gameplay loop can get kind of still after a couple of hours, but overall, it's a really fun time. This game was actually good and a unique take on Spider-Man video games. This game isn't amazing by any means, but it is fun throughout most of its runtime. Let's hope I can say the same about the PSP version. Yeah, the PSP version sucks. It is also a 2D platformer, but I feel like a lot of the charm is taken out of it. For some reason, the game is super dialogue heavy, stopping you every couple of minutes to talk to someone. It feels completely pointless. You can be a total dick to these people as well, but I don't know, I don't understand why this needs to be in the game. Anyways, the gameplay is kind of similar to the DS game, but the graphics are just pretty ugly, everything looks cheap, and the movement just feels pretty weird. The combat feels sluggish, and you move slow. Also, you can do these special moves that you see in the top right corner, but I never used them and most of the time would press them by accident. The camera is constantly lagging behind you, and it just isn't a fun game. I don't have anything to say about this game, it's so damn basic. It looks very cheap, and it plays very cheap as well. This is the last Spider-Man game on the PSP, so way to go, you went out on a whimper. Anyways, let's move on to the next game, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions for the Nintendo DS. This game is a sequel to the last game and plays similarly but improved on a lot of things, like the mini-map is a lot better, and this time you get to play as three Spider-Men from other dimensions. Like 2099 Spider-Man or Spider-Man Noir, it's super cool and they all play kind of differently from each other. All of them also have their own exclusive hub worlds, unlockable moves, and collectibles. I just don't have a huge amount to say about this game just because it is literally exactly like Web of Shadows on the DS, but better. I recommend this one as well. Although they have this really annoying touchscreen mini game you have to do when trying to switch dimensions, and it's really hard. No joke, this made me stop playing the game. But sadly, I don't have that much to say. So let's move on to Spider-Man Edge of Time. This time, not only being released for the DS, but also the 3DS as well. So I'll check out both versions. Starting off on the DS. This game has a very interesting style. It looks like a GBA game, but wow, it does not control well. The combat feels very delayed and I'm constantly getting stuck on things when climbing. This game also wants to slow you down every five seconds so you can read some text. But one of the main gimmicks in this game is switching between Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099, but it just leads to a big issue. Every time you switch between them while trying to solve a puzzle, it will show you exactly what you need to do. Like every couple of seconds, you'll have to stop what you're doing so the camera can pan to this random lever you need to pull. This was so annoying, like the gameplay is already pretty bland in the first place, but I can barely play the game because I'm being stopped every couple of seconds. Also, why does this game control so bad? The last Spider-Man game on the DS was really good and felt so good to control. I don't know, like I really did not like this game, it's just another very bland Spider-Man game. So I'm just gonna move on to the 3DS version. This game drops you right in. You're Spider-Man fighting Venom in this cool cinematic camera. This game is fully 3D, but Spider-Man eventually loses the fight with Venom and now you're playing as Spider-Man 2099. 
9. You don't have much movement as him, and it's just an excuse so they can drop the title sequence, but it was so cool. It makes the game feel like a console game. But after the intro is over, you get to the main game. First off, this game controls so well. Only one issue, I'm playing with an Xbox One controller. So if you want to turn your camera on this game, you have to use a D-pad on the Nintendo 3DS. No, this game did not have Circle Pad Pro support. Since I'm emulating this game, I can map the D-pad to a second analog stick, and it honestly works surprisingly well. So while the controls may be great while emulating it, I'm not sure how well they would hold up on playing on an actual 3DS. But the gameplay is super fun. Web swinging feels great and is super fast paced. Combat is the best out of any of the Spider-Man games I've played before. 2099 Spider-Man and Spider-Man both have completely different movesets. The mission structure is very linear. Its main focus is to tell a story. So you get a lot of cinematic moments with 2099 Spider-Man and normal Spider-Man. The levels are all pretty long and there was very few times where I got bored of them. Sometimes they can be really difficult, but it's fun trying to master them. In most of the levels, you are doing the same thing, just fighting bad guys and exploring these huge areas, but it honestly didn't get that repetitive to me. I got so into this game, and it's definitely my favorite out of all the games I've played in this video. You even have cutscenes that look amazing. It's fun going back to the levels trying to find all the little collectibles or pass all the challenges with a gold ranking. The game controls really well, with web slinging being controlled using the bumpers, both Spider-Man have pretty different special abilities that will be tied into the puzzles and combat. This game is extremely impressive on the 3DS, this truly feels like a console game, and I would highly recommend checking it out. But I do have to move on to the next game, The Amazing Spider-Man on the 3DS, DS, and PS Vita. This is the first and last Spider-Man game made for the PS Vita. I tried to emulate it, but it would just never work. Like, come on, just look at this game. It runs so poorly. Sure, it has the free roam like the console version, but is it really worth it at that point? I was able to play the DS and 3DS version, so let's check them out. Okay, so the DS version is, well... This looks like a flash game not only that but it also plays like one too i don't have anything to say about this game i mean just look at it everything feels so off the camera feels super jank fighting enemies feels like crap because there's no impact i just can't believe this is a ds game and not a flash game this is the last spider-man game on the ds so, kind of like the PSP, this game is going out on a whimper. I don't care, I'm moving on to the 3DS version. This one's fine. You start the game in this weird first person cutscene, which is 10 minutes long. No joke, it takes that long to actually get to the game. But once you take control, it is not really worth the wait. This is also another 3D game, same linear levels, but it feels like this game just wanted to be more like the Batman Arkham games. Most levels just have you doing stealth attacks until you can get to the next room, and the combat is just dodge enemy fight the next one, and do it all over again. It is not fun in the slightest. For some reason, they lock like six of the actions in this game behind the touchscreen, even dodging. Like, they got the last one to control so well, so why would you change that? There's this new web rush mode, it makes everything freeze and you can make Spider-Man quickly go anywhere you want. It's mostly pointless, sometimes it is used for puzzles, but that was very rarely. Combat feels fine, you can't get any cool moves really. Like literally the amount of skills you can upgrade in this game is just sad. The levels are all really boring, like I mentioned, it just go from room to room fighting enemies until you can get to the end. There's also this weird street pass mode, I think it's here to trick kids that this game has a free roam like the console version. I have no clue how this mode works. I I don't know what I can say about this game, it's extremely bland. I owned this game as a kid and only played the first level, and that's it. Maybe the game's sequel will be better. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, it released only for the 3DS this time, and it's the last game in today's video. So let's go see how we will end things. Would it shock you if I said this game was really bad? This one is a side scroller, it looks really ugly, fighting enemies feels horrendous, and everything just feels cheap. I mean just look at this game. I'm not sure what I could possibly say that you can't already see. The levels are all really bland and feel like there was no care put into them. First level in the game, New York. Second level in the game, Warehouse. Oh, and how could I forget the travel sections in between levels? You're behind Spider-Man while he's moving forward and it's really hard to actually move Spider-Man. The city is completely empty with no detail and I'm sorry, but this looks like an app I could download on my iPad in 2014 for free. I can't believe this game was a full price 3DS game in 2014. I know licensed kid games can be pretty bad, but this is one of the worst I've ever played. This game is boring and I never want to think about it ever again. This was also the last Spider-Man game released for the 3DS, so it did follow the same trend as the DS and PSP, but I can't believe this is a 3DS game and not some cheap mobile phone game. Hell, a lot of mobile phone games were better than this game at the time of its release. Have you seen The Amazing Spider-Man 2 on iOS? That was developed by Gameloft, and if Gameloft is doing better than you, then I'm sorry, you're just not trying. 
So that's every single Spider-Man game ever released for the DS and PSP. Yes, I know that PS Vita and 3DS are different consoles, but they fall into the same family. But I think I know why no one talks about any of these games, because most of them are mediocre or boring. But if you really wanted to, you could play Spider-Man PS4 on your Steam Deck, which makes most of these games completely pointless to come back to. But it's still fun to look back at what we used to have to play. And while most of these games are boring, I'm sure there are loads of people who played these games back when they were new and enjoyed them. There's probably only 4 games I could call good out of the ones I played, but what really matters? Did any of these games make me feel like Spider-Man? No.